and um, you know but there was always that you know vulnerable side to me as well yeah. because I was you know like coming on 40 years old but emotionally you know age 15 mm. and uh, yeah that was quite tough some tough times so really there. throughout those years you've never been able to sort of emotionally develop like no. you would have done no. on the outside world no I couldn't have sat here talking to you so what not because this is emotional but mm. basically because this is you're a woman as well yeah you know I was still looking down at the floor and shuffling my feet when I spoke to a woman honestly I was really was a teenager yeah. and I, I couldn't actually you know speak to a woman because mm. I, I hadn't I'd lived in an all-male environment all my life and a, a, a hostile all-male environment all my life and pretty much the only thing I knew was hostility yeah. so you've grown up physically but certainly not emotionally or, yeah. or mentally yeah. Yeah, I grew up physically. I was, a, you know, I was a fitness fanatic there. Yeah. But at the same time, for me, that was like with the eating. When I feel bad about myself, I don't eat, and when I feel bad about myself, I'll, I'll train and train and train and train, and overtrain and punish myself as much oh, as really? I can. Oh, really? So almost if you can't control what's mentally going on, you can con yeah. control your the physical yeah. sense. You can control your yeah. body. You can control that. Yeah. You know, it's one of the few things I could control. Mm. Because I know that uh, you developed some eating disorders, didn't you, as well, yeah. while you were Yeah. You were yeah, busy. sometimes I, 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 I really don't eat, and I don't eat for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Do you think that's a control thing as well? It's yeah. something that you can physically yeah. Can control? Yeah. Mm. And it is when, you know, what's going in in my head actually gets too much for me. Yeah. And I can't control them thoughts, and I can't stop them, and they don't go away, and they haunt me day and night. You know, and that doesn't go away, nor does the anger. And everyone sees me, who knows me as, you know, quite a calm person, but they also know that underlying level of anger that there is in me, mm. always just there, just under the surface. And it's always been like that for me because I've always felt guilty about a lot of things. You know, guilt from my childhood and what went on there, and then guilt for putting myself in prison, and then you know, guilt for keeping myself there. Because this is what I was told and this is what I was taught. Mm. And, you know, this is what I thought was true. I was just going to ask why you would feel any feelings of guilt when you knew that you were innocent, you knew you didn't deserve to be there, but yet you felt guilty. Do you feel literally you were taught to feel guilty? Is that what was drummed into you, do you feel, from over what, the years? What, what if I hadn't signed that statement, though? No, none of this would have happened, would it? All I had to do was just not sign a statement. Yeah. So you it know? all comes back to that. And it would never, that. you know, things would have been different. I would have mm -hmm. had my life and, you know, maybe I'll just be Joe Bloggs working in a factory somewhere in Manchester, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm not and, you know, I haven't got a wife, I haven't got kids, I haven't had a life, I haven't had a career. I didn't go out to a pub for the first time when I was 18. Yeah. You know. I didn't have my 21st birthday. My 21st was in the block. You know, I didn't have all that. And I can't get that back. That doesn't come back, you know. And I'm not saying I live with constant regret, because I don't. As I say, I, I love my life. And it is what it is, and it's, it's made me what I am today as well. And in many ways, I'm thankful for that, because I'm stronger for that. But in other ways, I'm not because I never wanted any of this. It wasn't mine. It wasn't mine. Um, it was just that I, I was the one who ended up getting it, you know? Yeah. No rhyme or reason to it. And I wish there was, I wish sometimes I could make sense of it. You know, and which is why I come down here and spend time down here and, you know, I will, I'll just sit here and on my own staring out to sea and sometimes try and find some sort of peace and some sort of rest, but it's few and far between, few and far between. You know, I have to cut myself off completely to actually try and find any space, any rest. And, you know, that's not always good either, but... 
You know, so this in is... your mind, you put everything really down to, from what I can work out, the signature on the statement. Do you feel no, that, that's not everything, is it? Or do you it? put a lot down to, no, to that's that? Not is everything. that why it's, you feel guilty? It's, I, mean, um, I suppose it's one thing building upon another. I mean, because of my earlier life, I mean, there's lots of things happened to me in my earlier life, which I still feel a lot of guilt about as well. So I actually was already in that position when I, um, uh, 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 when I, when I was arrested by the police, mm. you know. So I was already in a position of carrying a hell of a lot of guilt, yeah. and you know, basically about being really, really f***ed up by other people, mm. by other people specifically, by other people, you know. And um, that that sort of like continued for the rest of my life. And that just doesn't go away. How did you feel the, the first day that you officially walked outside of a prison and you, you knew that this could possibly be the start? Obviously, the conviction hadn't been officially quashed then, but you were walking out and it could be the start of you being possibly released at some point. How did it feel to be outside and um, to not be... It didn't feel anyway. any different. Really? I was still in prison. They actually wouldn't let me go home or anything else. They forced me to go into a hostel on release. And like I said before, I, I actually left prison without a national insurance number. You know, officially I didn't exist. Mm. I wasn't entitled to anything. Yet if it had been like a real criminal, you know, is this how you, you know, allow life sentence prisoners to be released? Mm. Well, of course you don't. Yeah. How can that be, you know, how can that be so? Yeah, I'm released even without a national insurance number. Why yeah. is that? Is because you're not prepared to help me in any way, shape or form, and they weren't. Were, did you have any kind of help were you offered to help you sort of adjust from being a prison inmate to no. obviously you were physically out of prison, I'm no. guessing you weren't emotionally out of prison, no. you're, you sort of mentally physically, weren't, weren't no. out. I, w I went to an open prison for 11 months, I was meant to be there two years but the Home Office argued about it for 13 months before they'd actually send me just to waste a bit more time and uh, you know basically uh, while I was there I, I think I got home leaves for my last three months or so or something like that last three or four months he got home leave which because they were forcing me to go to a hostel was a home leave to a hostel mm. and then of course I was released to the hostel and uh, I have so to say the hostel. So you had to stay in that hostel. Yeah. They weren't. They you weren't allowed to go and live wherever you wanted. No. You had to actually. No. So you were I still in control as such. Of uh, even if I went and signed on with the doctor, that doctor had to be the one the hostel sent me to because they were reported back to the hostel. You know, if uh, as I was, I was quite ill at the time, so I was on medication. Mm. I couldn't have the medication. The medication was sent from the doctors to the hostel and they called you in every evening and gave you one or two tablets for that day or for whatever, mm. just like they do in prison. You know, there was bars on the windows, you know. And did that carry on, f on for the, the whole of the two years until? Uh, no, that carried on for a few months until uh, uh, a guy actually committed suicide there, but he jumped out of a third floor window and killed himself uh, in an argument with a member of staff over a sandwich because this member of staff had decided that he was in charge and he would, the other guy was late so he wasn't going to get what he was entitled to and this guy was an alcoholic and he'd, he'd not eaten for two weeks or so and he went into a bit of a rage and just shouted on, you know, on your own head be it. He went upstairs and jumped out of the third floor window. <laughs>